Today is when how to bike starts to get really interesting. We've spent seven episodes educating you lovely viewers about all the core skills needed to ride a bike like a pro. You should now know how to learn a new skill, set up your bike properly, position yourself on the bike, move the bike underneath you, brake efficiently, generate speed and grip with pumping, and finally, use vision and line choice to your advantage. If you don't know, sounds like you need to go hit up the back catalog. It's on discount right now. Just use code bikes are good for 100% off. I joke, but this video is going to be dense. If you haven't already digested, understood, and even practiced skills from previous videos, it could be a bit of a brain melter. Now, we're gonna use all of these core skills and apply them to that classic trail feature, the corner. Okay. Corners come in infinite variations and styles. You've got your berms, your banks, flat turns, off camber turns, rooty ones, rutted ones, wet, rocky, dry, dusty, blown, and <gasps> buggered. This is why there are so many cornering videos on the internet, because there's just so much going on in terms of technique and trail. I'm not gonna sell you a good feeling here and say just do this one thing and you're gonna corner stupid fast in every turn. It would make a great video, but there's a bit more to it than that. Everyone has messed up a corner, absolutely everyone. Breaking in the turn, running wide on the exit, hitting the wrong line, straight up blowing right over it, even washing out and eating dirt. If you've not done one of these, well, you've never ridden a bike before. Even when you are a cornering pro, there's still little hints of mistakes that make the strive for perfection never ending and is why I am hooked for life. To lay out the rules, I'd like to start with a basic flat turn so I can establish the core rules. Then we'll take those rules to some more varied corners. On a lot of turns, you don't actually need to do anything special to get around them. You can have an awful technique and still make it work. <laughs> it's when you start trying to go faster or the trail gets harder that you start running into trouble. For this turn, I'm gonna start with my favorite thing, which is line choice. When you've got a simple yet tricky flat turn with no obvious banks, ruts or obstacles, you should treat it like a race car on a track and make your corner angle as smooth and open as possible. You would do this by approaching the turn wide, turning in to shave the inside of the corner or the apex as they like to call it in motorsports, then run wide on the exit using all of the available trail. This makes the turn the most open which should make it quicker and easier. Tighter turns are usually slower and harder to do. In essence, you are trying to make the corner easier with line choice. This rule will change once we start adding in berms and consecutive corners, but in general, it's a great starting point. Line dialed, it is time to sort out the break-in. This is such a headache for so many people as the classic instruction everybody has heard is, don't, don't break in the car! No, don't break, stay off, stay off the break. Ooh. Ooh. Why'd you crash? Oh. The reason to try this is because braking in the turn can cause you to lose traction and exit speed, which obviously isn't ideal. Not braking at all in the turn can work really well on tracks with mellower gradient or on short, supportive turns. But quite often, tracks are steeper, which means you've got gravity effectively jamming your throttle wide open. So for most turns, you want to use some proper race braking to slow things down before the corner. Where you start braking is dependent on the speed coming in, conditions of the track, how good your braking technique is. That's just too many variables for me to tell you exactly where you should start slowing down. So I'll leave that to you. The main thing is that when you do this positive deceleration, you do it where there is grip and before you start to turn on unsupportive ground. Everyone has experience with what happens when you panic brake while turning on loose ground and I like my skin attached to my body, so let's not do that. Once the hard race braking is done, you then initiate the turn and it's at this point that a lot of riders assume you're supposed to just be fully off the brakes. This can work and if you are doing this on some turns and staying off the brakes and maintaining control, then get in my son, that's sick, keep it up. But I guarantee there are a lot of turns it doesn't work on. Here's the theory I operate by. Don't release the brakes until just before the most challenging part of the turn. 
This could be the tightest part of the turn, the slippiest part. Or... If you're unsure where this is, try releasing the brakes at the start of the turn. And the place that you panic and grab them again should be the most challenging part. There are two reasons to release the brakes at this point. Number one, the most challenging part of the turn, in theory, should be the slowest. And you want to accelerate through the slowest part of the turn to maximize exit speed and minimize how much you have to pedal. The most challenging part of the turn is usually where you need the most grip and your tires grip the best when you are off the brakes. As to why you shouldn't necessarily let go of the brakes at the start of the turn, quite often when you let go of the brakes, gravity accelerates you into the turn and if there is a tighter or slippier part of the turn, you will arrive there too fast. Panic, brake, kill your speed and maybe even hit the deck. The solution is, once you are done with your race braking before the turn, you can then use a little bit of comfort braking, control your speed, and then fully release the brakes just before the most challenging point of the turn. This comfort braking can be done with both brakes if the grip is available, but if it's slippy and you're unsure, just the back brake is fine. It is amazing how much this has helped me with my cornering, so I'm excited for you viewers to have a go at this. I'm hoping you've watched the body positioning and braking vids and are intimately in tune with how they blend together because we now need to introduce weight shifts. You should already be aware that when actively decelerating, you need to have your weight shifted back in balance with how hard you are braking to get the most grip out of the tires. If you're then riding a chill unsupported turn that demands grip from your front wheel, you need to shift your weight forward into the centered boss stance feeling for that gentle palm pressure on the bars just as you fully come off the brakes. This evenly weights the tires so they can grip and hook you around that turn. The eagle-eyed amongst you will spot other fancy things going on in these examples, but I'm gonna be straight with you. Dropping outside pedals, twisting the body, shifting the hips, pointing outside elbows, bows and arrows, leading with the shoulders, and all that fancy stuff is secondary to line braking weight distribution when it comes to cornering. I've lost count how many times I've been following people down trails and they're giving it all this, the arms and legs and all that junk and I'm just rolling behind them, sat down all lazy boy and I'm keeping up with them, buzzing their back wheel just with line choice and braking. I'm not trying to brag here, maybe a little, <laughs> it's just that a lot of people are focusing on the finishing touches when they need to perfect the basics. Tires don't give a crap about how you're positioned on the bike, only that they're turning freely, have weight going into them, and are being aimed smoothly at the grippiest part of the trail. There's a bit more to add in terms of body positioning, but I'm gonna save those delightful tips for the end. What a tease, eh? In the meantime, pumping in corners was covered quite nicely in the pumping episode, but I'll just quickly reiterate and build on it here. Something I didn't mention in the pumping episode is that in corners, you should only really pump the bike if there is grip to do so. If you pump the bike on loose or slippy ground, you can encourage the bike to wash out, which is bad more often than not. That means the slippier it is, the more delicate you have to be with pumping. You can use this to your advantage though. Ever seen a shroud? This is done by using all the cornering rules in this episode with a slight tweak to line choice. If you enter a supportive corner at a sharper angle and pump when your front wheel hits the bank, the back wheel will slip until it also hits the bank and grips. Pretty cool, but it's also quite destructive, so I'd only recommend you do this very occasionally, preferably on your own trails that you maintain. For a long, chill, flat turn like our example here, there is no point in pumping mid-turn. You would gain a little boost in grip if the ground is not loose as you pressure the tires, but then you'd lose grip as they are then unweighted afterwards. I then add a mellow pump at the end of the turn to complete it, but if it's loose, I wouldn't pump at all. For corners with support, you want to pump where the turn is either at its most supportive or tightest, or at the end, or all of the above. Handiest method to identify where this is, is to ride the turn and at the point you feel the most G-forces pulling you down into the bike is the most likely place where you should be pumping. Vision is the last main ingredient to add to this delicious concoction and I see it getting added at the wrong point quite often. Just to clarify, you rarely look to the exit of a turn from the start of the turn. 
there's usually a lot of crap going on in the turn that needs looking at. I established in the line choice and vision vid that how far to look ahead is related to your speed. So again, this is one thing you need to experiment with to figure out for yourself. Where you should be looking and when is the critical bit that makes things flow like water. And when I'm riding, it's the only thing I'm thinking about. What you want to do is look ahead at your comfortable distance until you spot the challenging point of the turn. Lock onto it with your vision and spot the griffiest part of that section. So this is a turn that used to be beautiful. It was a nice big berm, super supportive all the way around, but over time it's fallen to bits. People have been cutting over the back of the berm into other tracks and it's just, it's not nice. So the general rule that everyone thinks in terms of braking is to be off the brakes at the start of the turn. You do that here, it goes, it goes really good for the first part of the turn. You're like, yep, yep, this is sick, this is great, this is brilliant, this is brilliant. And then suddenly, not good. The support disappears and more often than not, what you'll do, shift your weight pack, panic, grab the brakes and maybe wash out the front wheel. Not a nice turn. So the corner rule, like I said, is to get off the brakes before the critical point, the most challenging point, and that is the end of the turn. The support disappears. So you do your hard race braking, weight back, then you bring your weight slightly forward for the corner, but just comfort brake around the first part of the turn. So you're braking in the corner, which is absolutely fine, but then don't get off the brakes fully until just before the end of the corner. That is the bit you want to guarantee the speed for. That is the bit that you want to be sure you're going the right speed so you can then stay off the brakes, grip, and carry the speed out of the corner. At that point, that is the bit you want to do all the important things in terms of the advanced skills of looking through the turn, twisting through the corner, pumping through the turn, all at that last bit right at the end. But because there's not much grip, you're subtle with that pump. Don't, don't be aggressive. Flipping heck, that is a lot of info. Perfecting each of the previous points will get you like 95% of the way to riding turns fast and controlled. But there's more. If you absolutely super duper turbo pinky promise that you've got the previous things dialed, I guess we can dive into some of the fancy stuff. The first thing I would recommend adding to the skill set is angulation, which is the fancy word for leaning the bike over into a turn more than your body. The main reason you would want to do this is that it can encourage the line of cornering treads on the edge of your tire to bite into the ground. This can help you just find a little bit of extra grip in certain turns. I find on turns with plenty of support, like nice berms, deep ruts, you don't need to do this as there is already a surplus of grip available. But if you ever find yourself requiring more traction, this can help. I also wouldn't recommend exaggerating this to the level that some riders suggest as those cornering treads will be biting in a treat well before you get to some of the daft angles on display. Another important thing to note is that you should only angulate where it's needed. On a long flat turn, that might be all the way around it, but on a turn with a challenging point, it might only need it just right at that critical point for that extra grip. Take this corner for example, notice it can be ridden pretty fast without any fancy additional tweaks, but to squeeze just a little bit more out of it, you can add that bit of angulation. You do this by simply straightening the inside arm a little more than the outside. For those experienced with videos focusing on this technique, that will seem massively oversimplified, and it might be, but there's just so much going on in a turn that you just can't dedicate the brain power to setting the hips, pointing the knees, angling the shoulders and pointing in elbows, and, oh, all that other noise. The main thing is angling the bike, and that is done by pressing in on that inside hand from a center position. To practice this, I would just do some flat turns in a car park with the basic pumping technique that you definitely practiced from the last video, and now, as you pump the bike at the tightest point of each turn, just focus on pressing in on that inside handlebar to tip the bike in just a little bit more than the body. Nothing drastic, but once you've got it in muscle memory, you'll be able to pull it out of the bag when required. Here's another classic I see being used a bit too much, dropping the outside pedal. This is a very valuable skill in certain situations, but at some point, someone got a bit carried away and managed to convince most of the cycling world that you need to drop your pedal on every turn. Uh-uh, no, nah. stop it, no. First of all, why is dropping the outside foot good? It lowers the point your body's mass is weighting the bike by exactly one crank arm length, which makes things slightly more stable. It lifts your inside pedal up away from the ground so there's less chance of a pedal strike when leaning over. 
It allows your inside foot to be unweighted and higher up, which makes it easier to dab your foot onto the ground if your tires slip. It makes more room behind your inside knee, which makes it easier to angulate the bike into the turn. That all sounds great, so why should you not do it for every turn? Most turns require some form of pumping or resisting of g-forces. And if that outside foot is dropped, you have to try and do it all with one leg. That's a lot of work for one leg to deal with and it seriously limits how well you can pump. Have you ever tried to ride a pump track with one pedal all the way down? Yeah, it's not easy. Here's the rule I recommend you use. Only drop your outside foot when you feel like you need to find grip. There will be unique situations that still call for doing it, like when there's a, maybe an obstacle on the inside of the turn that your pedals need to be clear of, but most of the time, feet close to level. When applying this technique, I recommend doing it after the hard braking before a turn. You need the feet level to efficiently slow down and then only drop the foot while either off the brakes or when comfort braking. This skill also pairs beautifully with angulating the bike into the turn from a centered position. Don't forget to feel that palm pressure on the inside hand. Stay centered. Talking of pedal position, what about foot out turning, foot off the pedal? I reserve it only for really loose or slippy turns and I do it either for fun or if I just feel like a corner needs it. It's different for everyone and it is a personal choice. You do you. <laughs> Finally, the last thing I want to add to this colossal pile of absolute facts is angling the torso through the turn. Again, I need to stress that these additional things are not required to corner well, they just help you squeeze just a little bit more speed out of a turn. So if you're struggling to apply this stuff, then perfect the basics first. Similar to angulation, this technique can be applied in two ways. For turns that require a pump, you can preload the body like a spring by angling the body into the turn at the point that you would unweight preparing for the pump. As you pump the bike, you can then use your preloaded body to help the bike turn sharper and quicker. To do this, you need to twist the body, shifting your hips to the outside of the bike. The sharper the turn, the more you preload. Just don't take it too far or you'll get all unstable. Experiment to see how much works for you. Also, don't make the mistake of bringing your chest to the inside of the bike, which can put you in an unstable position. Hips to the outside. For turns that don't require any obvious pumping, you want to use the same timing as the outside foot down technique. Once you've finished race braking and are settling into a center position, lower the outside foot, set the hips to the outside of the bike and angulate the bike down into the turn. Hold this around the turn and then gently pump the bike straight and settle back into the boss stance out the exit. Piece of cake. Right, let's apply this to a few turns just to make sure we've got this all figured out because I mean, I'm not sure if I can remember all that. Just behind me, very tricky turn. Extremely chunky entrance, extremely chunky exit. Let's watch someone do it. Yo! Yeah, boy. Oh, yo. <laughs> Clearly never ridden it before and didn't know where to go. So first of all, line choice. Personally, I like to make things easier. I think the straight line in is super chunky. Lots of pedal catches makes the turn tighter. Wide line, we're gonna go for a bit of that. Line solid, now braking. You come in here pretty quick if you're doing the jump on the way in. So I'm gonna do some hard race braking on the straight run into the turn. Weight back on the anchors, getting as much traction from the tires as possible. Then I wanna think about where I release the brakes, or do I? This corner, the exit of it is into some steep, gnarly stuff. The rule isn't that you have to be off the brakes at the kind of tight point. It's that you don't want to still be braking hard at that tight point, because that's what's going to cause you big problems. Braking done. Body positioning. So once I've finished that hard braking on the way in, my weight's back, I'm going to bring my weight centered, ready for that turn with just that little bit of comfort braking. I'd say on the entrance, you have to pay attention to the big rock on the way in. You don't want to get too close to it. So I'd be looking at the patch of ground to the right of it so I don't get too close. Once I'm sure I'm lined up with that, I'm going to then look to the turn and there's a big rock in the turn that is going to hold you and that's the place that I'm going to really focus on turning off of. So I'll be looking to that rock and then just before I get to it, then looking down the next straight. In terms of any funky body positioning, fancy stuff, I wouldn't say I'm really doing anything in particular here because the rock on the inside at the start of the turn is gonna limit my speed. So grip isn't gonna be the limit here. 
and I don't even want to be going fast down the next bit. So you don't have to do anything fancy. Just core skills here will get you through this nicely. So this corner is different in a few ways. It's a lot steeper and there's loads of grip because it's like a big old berm. So coming down into a steeper turn like this, I talked earlier in the video about how you have to get your weight ready for the corner. On the flatter turn, you get your weight centered so the tires are evenly weighted. But on a steeper turn with a catch or a compression or a nice scoop to it, it actually puts a lot of energy back up into your hands. So if you get your weight forward before it and then hit the turn, too much weight goes through the hands and you'll just collapse into the bike. So for a corner that's got like a nice scoop or something, it's almost like a compression at the bottom of a steep bit. You need to leave the weight back far enough to prepare for the compression when you hit the corner. And then as the front wheel hits it, push through the legs to get your weight into the correct position for the exit. For a nice flat exit, that's back into boss stance. For a corner that immediately leads into another one, I'm still leaving the weight back a little bit to break and prepare for that corner. But the main thing with all these corners is once you got the technique right, you have to just trust the bike. It will grip if you've done everything correctly. So just trust it, rail that turn. This saw corner is obviously a bit interesting because it's got two corners immediately after each other. And you can see that uh, my body stays quite neutral and the bike sort of just follows the corner underneath me and that's getting a bit more complicated and we'll save that for series two. To wrap things up, here's the things to remember. Use line choice to make the turn easier. Do your race braking where there's grip. Comfort brake into the turn if required. Release just before the critical point. Bring weight forward after the race braking to evenly weight the tires. Pump through the turn if required, focusing on the legs and exiting in that controlled boss stance. Look for the critical point of the turn and look to the exit just before you hit that critical point. Angulate the bike if extra grip is required. Drop the outside pedal if a corner is loose, slippy or off camber. And finally, work on one thing at a time because holy crap, that is so much to remember. <laughs> one thing at a time. I'm gonna guess that you probably learned at least something today because oh boy, I did not stop talking. If you did, please turn your attention to that like button, release the brakes and give it a pump. I'm gonna try my best to angulate down into the comments and answer any questions that you will have. Now, it's up to you. Take your bicycle, go outside, find some nice chill corners, try applying each step, get frustrated, try again, get annoyed, watch the video again, keep at it, figure it out, rail some turns, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next vid. It's on drop, so you better subscribe because the, the bad examples are gonna be spicy. <laughs> oh, 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 it's a drop. Oh, 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 no, no.